Now, the Fed, of course, is set to continue hawkishness, with analysts fearing more hikes are in store as inflation remains strong. Now, markets seem to be taking the Fed's signals to heart, with February ending on a sour note over worries of interest rate tightening. But then comes March Madness. That might still be around the corner with its big meeting set for the end of March. So let's turn now to some of the analysts as to where the markets are headed. Joining us now, uh, Tony Crescenzi, PIMCO EVP market strategist and general portfolio manager. Thank you so much for joining me. So as we look at where things stand now, great. obviously... Markets have had a lot to digest this month and obviously trying to get a gauge on where things are with with the Fed and whether or not they should still be fighting it at this point. How would you wrap up where sentiment is now at the end of this month? Well, the, the bond market is still quite confident that the Federal Reserve will be ultimately successful in reaching inflation on uh, its target of 2%. This is evident in the market for inflation protected securities, which are priced for the U.S. consumer price index to average about 2.4 percent over the next decade. Contrast that against the recent inflation rates, which are over 5 percent. And clearly there's a, a, a vote of confidence in the Fed. You could say perhaps it's a leap of faith, perhaps that inflation expectation of 2.4 percent is a little bit too low, but uh, it does seem uh, that Markets think the Fed is close to being done because it's doing all the things that are necessary to bring the inflation rate down. And last word is that it's respecting the lessons of history uh, given to the Fed, provided, you could say, by uh, episodes in the 60s and 70s. And it's applying those lessons today in the way it conducts its monetary policy. And that's giving the markets lots of confidence. So, Tony, though, in reality, then, history is telling us that the Fed is almost done. But when you look at the tight labor market, when you look at consumers still spending so robustly, how much should we be relying on history versus perhaps something that we're not quite used to with this current phase? I think we could expect the Fed to be successful in bringing the inflation rate down. The problem for markets, as you suggest, is uh, the path. It may be gut-wrenching to get there, that, that last mile, if you will, from getting the inflation rate down, let's say, from the threes to the twos, uh, could be quite challenging from an economic perspective because it might mean an increase in the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate. It might mean tighter financial conditions, in other words, weaker stock prices, et cetera. And so uh, while we should have confidence in the Fed and its formidable power, uh, the path to achieving its objectives could be quite rocky. And so break that down for us, because I know you mentioned this term, the path to central bank heaven, wondering if the Fed can actually get there as we hear about this hard, soft or no landings, all these different scenarios. How you talk about your faith in the Fed. What does the path look like Whereas as they're rolling things off their balance sheet and the expectations for the Fed rate hikes ahead? Well, the expression uh, in, in the bond market is that only hawks, those who are vigilant about inflation, go to central bank heaven. The Jay Powell Fed seems to be uh, hawkish and therefore are headed to central bank heaven. But what does that mean in, in all practicality? Well, let's think of what's called the proxy Fed funds rate, as you mentioned, the Fed's balance sheet. So the Fed funds rate is headed, the markets think, to around 5.5%. But there's some value that should be placed for the efforts it's taking with its balance sheet. Think of uh, the housing market, the weakness there, near 40% drop in sales. Why? because mortgage rates have gone up. Why did they go up? Because the Federal Reserve is reducing its holdings of mortgage-backed securities, causing those uh, interest rates to rise. So there is some value in that. So what I'm getting at is in deciding whether or not the, the federal funds rate has gone up enough and how much it need go up, you add the Fed funds rate expectation, 5.5%, plus something else. The San Francisco Fed says add another percentage point, roughly, you get a 6.5% funds rate. So what does that mean? Uh, in terms of equivalence. Six and a half relative to history looks high, uh, but what do we compare it to? Prospective inflation is the answer. Uh, and prospective inflation, I suggested based on tips, is around two and a half percent. That puts the so-called real interest rate at around four points. Now, in the 60s, it took a three-point real yield to get the job done in 1969. 1979 to 82, it took five points, but that was a 15-year long problem. The current problem is two years long. So it looks like four points uh, probably will be enough to eventually get the job done. Final, final word is we combine this with 
uh, fiscal tightening. The Uncle Sam isn't spending as much money as before uh, post pandemic, and of course the tightening of financial conditions. Uh, so what I'll call is call this is the three F's: the Fed, uh, fiscal, and financial conditions combining to get the job done uh, with the so-called long and variable legs that we're accustomed to hearing about. And Tony, as we look at some of these analyst predictions here, we heard from Bank of America expecting a big slowdown in consumer demand that might be needed to get inflation to the 2% range. You also have Deutsche Bank's Jim Reed really citing the data he's using as saying he's expecting a hard landing given the boom and bust cycle. As you put all of this together and you, as you look at some of the key events that are coming up in March, how, does, how, is, how are you laying out the, the breadcrumbs here as to what you're focusing on when you have so much noise and froth in the markets right now? The, probably the, bit, the best thing to do is think of so-called initial conditions. How do things look as we go into this? In other words, what kind of shape are we in? Did we uh, exercise enough? Uh, is a way to think about it if you're thinking about fitness. Uh, the initial conditions for the U.S. economy are quite good. Uh, number one, uh, the consumer household balance sheets are quite strong. What does that mean? Well, here's one example. Household net worth, according to the Federal Reserve in a quarterly report, is uh, up $40 trillion in the past five years, even with the recent drop in stock prices. That's 40% to $140 trillion. That seems like a good cushion to prevent a hard landing. Secondly, uh, consumers, as you've heard, uh, have high saving balances built up during the pandemic, about a trillion and a half above the long-term trend line. So that's money that could be spent. And the final word on the consumer is uh, relates to the labor market, income, because we all need income to spend. Uh, the job story there looks good with high amounts of job openings that won't change much uh, relative to what could have happened in the past because of demographics. Best fact, 1957, uh, biggest birth year last century. That means 65 years later, I've got lots of retirements. And this is a wave that lasts through 2030 when the last boomer uh, turns 65 at the December 31st, 2029. So we've got a big retirement wave keeping the supply of labor low, wages up, help boost spending. So uh, think about those initial conditions. And I've left out lots of other initial conditions I could cite, including the low level of inventories in the housing market that will cushion that market against lower prices and therefore help the consumer. Certainly a lot to keep an eye on there. Thank you for breaking all that down for us. Tony Crescenzi there, PIMCO EVP market strategist and general portfolio manager. Thank you for your time this morning.